Burlington Redevelopment Board meeting of February 4th, 2015. Uh, first on the agenda tonight is a continued hearing on the draft master plan. Uh, after the public hearing held, we heard a lot of comments from residents of the town. Uh, <coughs> based on the public hearing and some feedback received following that, uh, there have been some recommendations made by the Master Plan Advisory Committee, several members of whom are here this evening to discuss um, with us. Uh, so I'd like to invite someone forward to go over these recommendations. I can do that. Charlie Klaus, this is Thank Chair of the Master Plan Advisory Committee. We do have a quorum here, so this is an official meeting for the Master Plan Advisory Committee as well. Um, what we did working with staff is um, address a number of, of uh, comments we heard at the public hearing and uh, have recommended some changes. And I would go over those point by point if, you, if you'd like. And um, Carol, if you could tell sure with some, of the, uh, some of the comments. Um, the first recommendation is the committee recommends inserting concern for capacity of the public schools. Um, the high school accreditation, the size of the high school campus, the need to rebuild uh, the high school, and that would appear in the uh, introduction of the plan. Um, and that would be also appear in the uh, public facilities and services chapter recommendation for space needs analysis. And that's on page 132 of the master plan. And then there's a uh, implement, implementation step, uh, step because we heard loud and clear from the public uh, how important high school uh, accreditation is and also capacity of other schools in, in the system. <coughs> Any questions? Would you like to take these one by one and discuss them or just go through them? We can go through them. Okay. Uh, the second is um, the committee recommends adding a housing recommendation. Um, this is on uh, it's a recommendation number five, um, uh, pages seven, and then again on 63. It's to study and plan for the increased supply of smaller, over uh, 55 active senior market rate housing and for affordable subsidized housing to meet Arlington's population trends. We do know that um, there is an increase in the number of over 55s, uh, just demographics, and then people, we, we have evidence that people over 55 are actually moving into Arlington, downsizing, uh, moving closer to Boston and Cambridge. Um, and there's a continuing need for affordable, subsidized housing in town. We've heard that loud and clear as well. Um, also, housing recommendation on page seven. Um, regarding minimum parking requirements, um, committee recommends substituting the word modified for the word removed on page seven. And if, if I can jump in and help with the context. Elsewhere in the plan, this recommendation was already represented as looking into modifying parking requirements. With this one location in the plan, it said remove parking requirements. And the recommendation is to make it consistent throughout the plan so that they will be modified. On page 7 it says modified, and then elsewhere in the text. Again, that same area. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, the committee recommends removing the phrase accessory apartments on page 31. There was a comment in um, <coughs> public meeting, maybe more than one comment about accessory uh, apartments. We heard that, so we want to remove any reference to accessory apartments in the, uh, in the master plan. That's on page 31. On uh, number five would be the committee recommends adding um, the Millbrook study area as a high priority for both redevelopment and for preservation. Uh, that's in the land use recommendations uh, section. 
Uh, it's on pages 5 and 36. And we'd also add that the three village centers are priority redevelopment areas, that being um, East Arlington, Arlington Center, and, and Arlington Heights. Six is um, that he recommends mm -hmm. noting the introduction, um, the, the contrasting public opinions on parking um, underscores the need for further study of, of uh, parking. And that's already included in the implementation section on page 150. We feel pretty strongly that more uh, parking studies are needed, uh, primarily in East Arlington and Arlington Heights, similar to the parking study that was done. Arlington Center. Uh, another comment was um, we received a number of comments uh, promoting locations throughout town on Class A or Class, class B office space um, or an innovation park for economic development. Uh, committee recommends adding this to the economic development recommendations on page 7 and 75, and then adding an implementation step to study and identify appropriate locations, um, and also regulations to encourage new office buildings or an innovation park. An innovation park would be one that's really oriented towards the knowledge economy, um, similar to what's in, in Cambridge. I mean, Somerville's also looking at that as well. We have a lot of um, Professionals in, with, who live within Arlington, this may be attractive to them rather than commuting to Boston or Cambridge. Um, eight, the committee recommends adding implementation step to study and consider amending setbacks, uh, floor area ratios, and other techniques that could address the concern for neighbor impacts for large homes that are constructed in existing um, established uh, residential neighborhoods. This came up uh, again through a number of residents who raised the issue. This is a mansionization issue that a lot of towns are facing. So um, we think that there should be a, uh, a more work needs to be done on that and how that's addressed. So, so recommending a study. Uh, another recommendation is. Um, adding implementation step to update Arlington's sustainability action plan and um, note, explicitly note the concern for flooding, particularly in East Arlington. There are other places in Arlington that have flooding problems as well, we know along Mill Brook, but it's a particular concern in um, certain areas of town and uh, we can mention that or emphasize it more. Uh, the committee also recommends uh, implementation steps to consider mechanisms to ensure, uh, ensure a balance of housing and a significant business component in future mixed-use building. So mixed-use, again, uh, we want to make sure that um, if, if it is a single, the first floor being business, making sure it's taking over bulk of the space on that first floor and then residences above. Uh, we just want to make sure that um, businesses are given the opportunity. That's truly mixed use, um, mixed use development, make that clear. Um, the next one is 11. Um, committee recommends adding implementation steps for regulating the removal of mature trees on private property. Arlington is a town of trees. We heard that loud and clear. Uh, it's in the introduction in terms of one of the attractive traits of Arlington is, is um, the mature trees. And we've lost a, a lot of trees because of their age, disease, whatever. Um, so I think they're, they're recommending that um, it be a study to see how that can be regulated when <coughs> even if some private property want to remove a forward very large tree. Other towns have done that as well. Um, the committee asked the staff to provide examples of problems with multiple uses requiring special permits um, and a discontinuity of uh, zoning districts. Um, so 
Carl, would you like to address that one? Sure. This came up a bit. The, there was a, a comment that because this is uh, cited as a problem throughout the district, it was felt that we should give examples of what kind of problems that creates. So in the abbreviated uh, brochure that is prepared, being prepared for town meeting member information sessions, we're going to go into um, examples of the discontinuity of the districts and why that can be problematic and what, not just for the property owners, but for our butters as well, neighbors. Uh, likewise with special permits, we'll give some examples of why uh, at least the environmental design review special permit might not always be a one-size-fits-all for all use, all the uses that are currently, currently called for. It. So that we could work that into um, the, the plan itself or the plan and the summary. Um, but he also recommends adding an open space uh, recommendation to identify and study small parcels of open space that could be either uh, could be acquired uh, with Community Preservation Act funds. Um, Community Preservation Act allows that um, just identifying the sites. Uh, the committee recommends implementation step to improve the condition of. Uh, town to open space at Pond Lane. Um, this, I think there was one comment about um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a little unclear in terms of the open space, what's private property, what's public property uh, in Pond Lane, but the town does have uh, property there. Well, why so specific with that particular one? I mean, everything else seems to be much more... Much more general? Yeah. Um, I think that there is, there was some lack of clarity in terms of that being open space. Correct. Well, we did that in town meeting a few years ago. We, we, we it is on the open right. space layer. It is protected open space. But I think this is trying to get at how the town manages it and maintains it. Okay. Just seems a little, I mean, it's, it's okay to, <laughs> yeah, so um, mm -hmm. it just seems a little. Too uh, specific. Very yeah, specific. it just seems very specific given everything else. That's just my opinion. Again, maybe because of the lack of clarity in terms of is it, is conservation commission have any responsibility for this no. parcel no. land? No, park and rec. It's all park and rec, so it would be public works that maintains it. So okay, it's up for discussion. Then. Mm -hmm. um, committee recommends adding the following recommendation. Um, steps and this is the exact language to quote use more native and natural choices for landscaping on town owned properties consider replacement of some grass areas with na native ground covers consider a bylaw to require uh, some native landscaping for new developments um, there's been an increase in the number of invasive species around town we think that um, the native species should be used wherever possible and probably needs more uh, more study, but we believe there should be a recommendation on this recommendation. Um, the there's two more recommendations. The committee recommends changing design guidelines implementation step to near term and editing on pages 142 and 152 so that um, the design guidelines refer to both commercial and industrial districts to be consistent with other sections of the master plan. Um, for example, on page five and the key recommendations. So there's an inconsistency. Again, I want to make sure that what we're saying in the introduction is consistent with the conclusions and recommendations and then the implementation as well. Um, and the last recommendation of the committee is to add the phrase for economic development in the Historic and Cultural Resource Areas Recommendation Number 3. And I'll give a page on that. Um, page 53. Yeah, it's in the, it's in the uh, I think it's 93. It's in the key yeah. recommendations as well as in the section itself. So, I can find two recommendations. 
to that at the beginning. On page four, second column, towards the top, it's the third one under historic and cultural resource areas. Promote arts and cultural activities for all ages. It would have, it would, also, it would say promote arts and cultural activities for all ages for economic development. And, and did you say the other page is 90? 94. 94. And the reason for this was the plan, master plans, because they're focused on physical development and land, they, we tried to have a discipline throughout the process of not um, making this plan about activities or programs. Uh, though we felt this was important, and throughout the plan there are there's a lot of overlap between the elements. And one of the things we say over and over again is that a lot of the reason why we we value the history and culture cultural um, venues in town is because they are good for economic development. So I. <coughs> But it was an important way to keep that, but to link it to why are we doing that? Because it's really just economic development. It's not just development. No. For economic development. For economic development oh. to a attract business to. Oh, 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 tourists. How valuable they are as tourist tourist shoppers. Yes. Right. That's why do people go to Lexington or Colorado? Okay, I get it. I get it. I totally agree with that. Yeah. But that should be. Any of the committee members want to add to any of the recommendations? Thank you. I want to start by uh, thanking Charlie and Carol Swenson and the members of the Master Planning Advisory Committee for a tremendous effort um, and a, a very good uh, draft of the master plan. Um, it's really pretty encyclopedic, uh, the listing of all the town's resources, um, and I think the, the recommendations are, are very thoughtful. Um, and uh, I guess my first question is, with respect to the recommendations, Charlie, that you just went through, um, what's the next step? These get woven into the final version of, of the master plan? Yeah. Maybe I shouldn't say final version because I know it's a living document and it uh, will, will evolve you know, over the next 10 years as well. But that's the next step is to get these 17 recommendations. If, if you accept those, yes, to get these recommendations into the document that would then be posted mm -hmm. um, on the town's website and also be uh, presented to town meeting as well. Okay. Um, there are some typographical issues and things like that, which I presume are going to be uh, addressed as, uh, in the process of putting these changes in, or these additional recommendations. The staff is doing that as a And uh, I have to master. credit a member of the committee as well. We are so fortunate to have a professional editor mm -hmm. on the committee who has already started um, to go through and redline the typos and uh, other uh, consistency issues. So. They're all in here, thanks to Anne LeRoyer, um, and those will be okay. incorporated as well. They weren't highlighted this evening because they're not uh, of a substantial. It's, right, and, and I found a few, but I can send those along to whoever's compiling the, the, the list. I did have a couple of substantive questions. Um, on page 10, there's a suggestion that the zoning bylaw be amended to allow for multiple units of historic houses. And I was wondering, I, I'm a little leery of introducing the in-law apartment scenario that was the subject of a previous warrant article and voted down by town meeting two or three years ago. So I was wondering if we should perhaps <coughs> um, 
clarify that we're talking about properties that are already zoned for more than one unit as opposed to historic houses in an R1 district? There is a technique. Um, I can't find the um, citation on the page on page 10, but I know 10. it. I think it's page 10, yeah. Yeah, that's the summary. Maybe it's in the section. I'll look for it. Okay. It also comes up on page 94 in the recommendation. Okay. The, there is a technique where um, some communities have allowed flexi me, flexibility for historic buildings to allow a, a little more latitude for use if it's going to mean they'll be preserved. Mm -hmm. um, so I think if that sounds to me like um, this recommendation. Okay, I'm looking at page 94. Yeah, 94, it's the recommendation yeah, eight. 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 Okay. Consider amending. Yeah. Let me see. And this phrase says consider, so I, I guess, you know, it's. it's yeah, not as a an alternative to demolition. It's, it's kind of a, a, like a last resort if. Mm -hmm. if um, in, in Lexington, they do this so that they don't lose the historic buildings. It's something that now I, I can't say that I know all the current mechanisms of how it operates in Lexington, but the idea here was to look at it as one more tool in the arsenal of trying to keep buildings that are otherwise going to be taken down. Hmm. Okay. But it doesn't, you know, that this could be, the language could be revised, it could be study amending. <coughs> I mean, consider and study are there, there, there's only a there, subtle difference, right. but... Okay. I don't disagree with your concern, so just to put it out there. So I, I agree, I think, and I wonder, it's it's very specific to allow multiple units in historic homes. Yeah, why Could we, you go you, more broadly and say to consider... Um, I, I, I don't know, alternative zoning you know, yeah. considering uses. uses. Mm -hmm. oh, alternative uses. Yeah. Alternative uses. Mm -hmm. Or something. Yeah, because because the units is like an example of one thing that mm -hmm. could yeah. arise from this. Right. Not mm -hmm. the only thing. Not the right. only thing. Right. Multiple units may not be the, the right thing. Right. right. But or Arlington. Um, I guess that would be my Yeah, opinion. I mean you could see somebody you know saying, well, I'm going to knock the house down unless you allow me to put four units into what was right. once a single family house. And almost using that as leverage mm -hmm. to get multiple units, which, but I sort of like Andy and Mike's idea of considering alternative uses. Mm -hmm. So that was one suggestion. Do you committee have any opinion on that? These are historic buildings. Mm -hmm. There's slated for demolition, and the question is, the language says multiple units, consider multiple units, rather than, I think your recommendation is alternative, alternative uses. Yes. Alternative so uses. can you give me an example of an historic building that's slated for demolition? I don't think there's anything right now. I'm not aware of any that are currently on the demolition delay on the um, what is death it? watch. It's a year. Is it a year? In Arlington, it is a year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if they're on there, what would their re the reasoning be? Would it be that the the, the owner the doesn't want the building? Demolition delay is if someone has a building that is historically significant. It's on the inventory of historic buildings, and it's under the jurisdiction of the historical commission. In that case, mm -hmm. if it's on the inventory, it's under the dis jurisdiction of the historic, historical commission. If the owner applies to demolish the building or demolish uh, more than 25% of a facade of the building, it triggers a hearing before the Historical Commission for demolition delay. During that delay, during that year, the Historical Commission works with the owner to try to present alternatives to demolition, to demolishing the historical resource. So uh, the, a lot of property owners will just wait out the year. Um, some will look to move the house or will consider um, some alternatives to taking the house down. Uh, the Historical Commission has some resources and some, uh, I don't mean financial resources, but uh, technical assistance 
that they can provide to, uh, for example, introduce the owner to um, historic tax credits. Mm -hmm. So this is the building that's the subject of this discussion, a building that's um, going to be taken down. Um, so some communities with a lot of historic buildings will uh, allow a little greater latitude for use if it means saving the building. And, and, and Bruce makes the point that well, they could play that. You know, mm -hmm. They could abuse that. Um, so. so would there ever be a case where the building was slated for demolition because of structural problems? And in that case, would you would have to spend money to bring it up to whatever code in order to look at alternative uses. I mean, I'm not sure what, what would trigger the demolition of one of those buildings, but probably we can talk about not that. Not every offline. owner wants to Inefficient keep it. Inefficient use. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 If, if they don't want the building, they would rather put up something new that um, there are lots of people who find they own a historic <coughs> building and they don't want it okay. for different reasons. The land might be more valuable to them. How many historic houses are there in Arlington? Do you know what that number is? I don't have that number, but um, I could give... In the appendix? Joey, say it louder, please. 1734. Oof. And is that the number on the historic, historically significant building list? Okay. Or in the historical district. Well, it sounds like the alternative use works, works fine. It can accommodate different things. The right. alternative uses could be could be multiple, could be multiple, multiple, yeah, multiple residential yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure could right. be commercial mm -hmm. yeah. so I think we can we agree you're, yeah. you're mm -hmm. considering amending a bylaw so yeah there's a lot to it to get to that point yeah there's a lot to get to that point but keep it broad right but keep it we keep it broad as part of that consideration yes. I think because otherwise I think there is a concern that mm -hmm. it looks like a backdoor into 1734. Or a zoning change that's yeah. somehow thrown. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's many houses that affects actually many, many houses. Very good point. So we'll change <coughs> that to say um, a broader range of uses instead of multiple units. Is that right? Yeah. Alternate uses, I think. Was Alternate right. uses, yeah. okay. Right. That would go on 94 again. 10? Pitch 10 and pitch 24. It's number 5 on pitch 10. Yeah. Okay. Next item I had was on page 17, and I'm just having some trouble with the chart um, and whether or not it supports the statements that are in the text immediately above it, or it's breaking out the statistics. And I could be reading this wrong, but for example, where it says married couple families account for 81% of all family households in Arlington, um, and then in the chart it shows total households are 19,000, and family households are 11,000. That doesn't seem like 81%. So yeah. it, it could be thickness on my part, but I'm not seeing that the statistics in the chart support the statement in the text. So I just call that to your attention so you can figure out which one, whether the chart's right or the text is right. Okay. Probably the text in that. Yeah, oh, and actually it goes in comport to the sentence right before it. Because the, the, the number of families overall increased slightly. Still, they represent less than 60% of all households. And then it says married couple. Oh, it's married, oh, married, family married couple, not family families. families. Yeah. So there's a difference. Okay. There. Well, that's a little nuanced. So it's 81% of the 10,779. Right. Right. Or 10,900. Okay, so maybe there is isn't. Oh, so it's married couple families account for 81% of those family oh, those families. Of the families. Oh, okay. 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 So maybe there doesn't need to be a change. A clarification. Yeah. A clarification as to what Table 2.4 is really illustrating. Um, on 18, and this is sort of a similar type of problem, 
uh, in the left-hand column down near the bottom, there's a statement that says, in addition, the income gap between Arlington and its wealthiest neighbors, Winchester and Lexington, has decreased. For example, 40 years ago, Arlington's median family income was 77% of Winchester's. Today, it is just 68%. That sounds like the income gap is increasing. I, I had that note as well. Okay. Yes. I, um, I think it's a word change has increased rather than decreased. Okay. Um, on page 77, um, sandwich board signs are mentioned. And this board has struggled with sandwich board signs in the past, and I think we see that it can be very beneficial to retailers, particularly restaurants, and getting people in from the street, um, but it's proven, it, it, it seems to have be a regulatory problem in getting folks to make sure that there's enough uh, passing distance between the front of the building and where the sandwich board is, and that it comes in after business hours and doesn't stay out permanently. Um, so, I, is this a recommendation or is this? I, I agree with you. Yeah. Well, I, I, think, yeah. I think I would take it out <laughs> also yes, because yeah. it's also an including. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. The whole notion is, is, is it's about enhancements of signs. So okay. it, really, it really doesn't. And those are temporary signs. Yeah, it really doesn't. Mm -hmm. They're really not the, the subject of what you're talking about is an upgrade of the overall environment, not temporary. Right. So I think, oh, yeah, it's a good idea to remove it. Okay. Just take that one. Mm -hmm. On page 101, um, and I think this is just a, a, a praising issue. Uh, we were talking about construction in the floodplain, um, and this is on the right-hand column, the first sentence of the first full paragraph which currently reads, since construction in a 1% floodplain is strict, strictly regulated by both state and local bylaws and has to be permitted by the Conservation Commission, I think it would be better to say and can be allowed only by permit issued by the Conservation Commission. So we don't want to make it sound like CONCOM is under some mandate to issue permits here. We want to m make sure that people understand you can only build there if the Conservation Commission allows you to do so. Bruce, would you mind repeating how you said it should read? Okay, so what I would do is, um, so right after the comma, after bylaws, mm -hmm. and where it says, and has to be permitted, yes. I would change that to, and can be allowed only by permit issued by the Conservation Commission. Page 105, there's a small inconsistency in the right-hand column where it talks about state-owned open space, where it says, in 2003, the DCR prepared master plans for both the Alewife Reservation, and it has 2003 in parentheses, and the Mystic River in 2009. So hmm. it doesn't sound like they both happened in 2003. Right. Okay. That's straightened out. things I had were just um, a reflection of my own lack of understanding. Um, I think I like the idea of the certified local government designation for the Arlington Historical Commission, but I don't think I know enough about it. So I'll throw it out to the other board members and, and let them comment on that. And with respect to um, the transfer of development rights, mm -hmm. yeah. that I, I think would be something that would need further study. Um, and, and I'm not quite sure how the recommendations come down on this, whether it's 
in the directed category or the considered category. Uh, I'm comfortable if we're considering it. I don't know if I'm ready to sign up for directing it. I think we would agree with that. Okay. It's the first time we heard about transfer development rights. Um, it's a possibility. We don't know enough about it, so I think it does work in further study. Okay. That's all I have. Mike? Yeah, so the, the couple things I had uh, were, one, in, in the new recommendations, I guess, I, for some reason, number 14 does just hit me as being very specific versus all of the other ones um, that we really talk about. Certainly you talk about different pieces of land and everything else. I just find the committee recommends uh, adding an implementation step to improve the condition of the town-owned open space at Pond Lane. But frankly, I just think it opens us up to everybody raising their hand and saying, why isn't this parcel here? Why isn't that parcel here? It just, that doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm not sure why 14, uh, we'd want that to go specifically in. Um, so that's that's the first thing I've mentioned. So I don't know what the rest of the committee feels, uh, of course the board feels about that. But, um, um, and then, I guess, um, recommendations and implementation steps um, with respect to the, uh, wait, uh, shoot, I've lost it, um, where we talk about, I guess on the non, uh, on the native uh, plants, is it only on town-owned properties that we're talking about that? I thought there was something more broadly, and now I can't find it. Um, There's also um, an item about, um, Studying uh, regulation of trees on private property. Yeah. That's item 11. Is that it, Mike? Yeah, maybe it is that. I, I also saw the non natives down below, but I, I hadn't uh, attached it to the town owned properties. And I guess that's fine. Um, it's, it's just if that were to be broadened out with some type of bylaw for everybody, that I think we should think twice about that or, or talk about study or, or what have you. Um, but I agree. Um, the other one that I was going to was on the mature trees. Um, and I guess all we're doing is studying the methods of regulating it, so I think that's probably fine. I do think that even that will be somewhat controversial. When the committee talked about it, what were the thoughts around uh, that particular one? Well, again, it had to do with town character. Right. A lot of people have observed a lot of large trees being removed on private property. And saying, what can we do about it? And wanted to know what other towns were doing as well. So that would be a source of studies probably to look at what other towns have done. Whether it goes farther than that, don't know. Um, yeah, okay, so maybe maybe it's, it's to add the last bit to that, where it says adding an implementation step to study methods of regulating the removal of mature trees on private property <laughs> um, and um, I don't know, diligence what, or, or discover what other towns have done in such situations. In other words, really make it look like a study. That really what we're talking about here is just to come back with uh, thoughts on it. And not that it's going to be a study and then it's going to be a, a warrant article in the next, you know, go around. Okay. I think that's the other one. Uh, and then. I actually agree on the TDR, so I'm glad to hear that the recommendation is to move that to a study because I did find the TDR to be, a, it's kind of funny, it's it's just kind of not really talked about throughout and then it's boom, and then you know it talks about it versus I think a lot of the other things that we've talked about have been weaved in into the narrative and that one just kind of shows up as well as I think the historical. Uh, the certified local government. Um, I, so I think, I think the notion of studying each of those makes a lot of sense. So the implementation, yeah, that, that's page 151 yeah, is yeah. for the that's implementation. That's what you were, I think that's what you were saying too, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Because I certainly don't know enough about either to consider whether it's a good idea or not. I agree with the TDR thing. 
And where, where would it end up now that you're moving it? I don't. Or not, would it not end up anywhere? Well, I think the suggestion is to make it, not necessarily move it, but make it less a directive idea and more an idea okay. that we'd be studying. Okay. Yes. What's that? Can you explain 12 again to me in terms of what is that? What is that? Mean? Sure. Ask the staff to provide. Oh, uh, we had comments from the public asking to hear exactly. what are the problems with having so many uses allowed only by special permit, and what is the problem with having so many uh, discontinuous uh, zoning districts on in Arlington? Not not so much in the residential districts, but that's out of Broadway. So the idea here would be the staff would provide those examples, uh, which we've already started to do in the little summary that will be provided to town meeting. We could add it to the master plan as well. Um, it would just, it wouldn't be, it would not um, sure. yield new recommendations. It would not yield new implementation steps. It would help to um, amplify what the issue is and what the problems are. Where in the master plan is that referenced? Uh, land use. And land use. It's, it's probably in the introduction as well, but... Zoning. Zoning in Arlington, mm -hmm. page 23. What's the phrase you're looking for? I've got a search of an electronic copy. Oh, no. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> what page which do you phrase, Which phrase are you looking uh, for? Uh, too many zoning districts. I, I, I'm not sure how it, how she has it phrased. Too many but special permits. Oh, oh, too many special permits, permits and discontinuous zoning districts. Yeah, it was a female question. Very stark. Right. Too many special. Yeah, permits. I'm page. <coughs> like on page 23, it kind of gets to it. Fifteen thirty-four. Thirty-four dependents on special permits. Well, it's thirty-four electronic. It's twenty-four. Um, yeah, on page twenty-four it says Arlington has so many special permit options. Right. That Arlington has so many special permit options makes it nearly impossible to develop a plausible forecast of the town's so-called build-out potential. That is the difference between the amount of development that exists now and that which could still be built under existing zoning. We have a lot of uses that um, are allowed by special permit, and those uses might be very different than the by right use. Yeah, it's actually in this. <laughs> I started drafting this for the summary, and one of the things I looked when I looked at the map, um, there's if you look at the block between Route 16 and I think it's like Windsor Street or Amsden Street. There are seven or eight zoning districts. Long in two yeah. blocks, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's not even. I don't even think it's a. It's not even a half mile. Um, you've got the same thing. Now, um, Is that the Forest Street? Is that's there? right, on Forest Street, between mm -hmm. Mass Ave and the bike path. That's not a half, quite a half mile, and I think there are six zoning districts there. There are also isolated parcels that are surrounded by two or three different zoning districts. So a property owner might buy a building based on what's there today and not realize that what could be built next door on three sides of them
could be very different than what's there today, or vice versa. They could tear down and build something that's very different than what their neighbors thought they would always have next to them. And that's kind of um, the story of zoning anywhere. But in Arlington, it's, it's worse because we have these little isolated pockets and um, a real kind of patchwork in short distances. So it, we could take these examples and add them to the land use section, I suppose, if that would help. Is it possible to develop a plausible forecast of the town's build-up potential? And it defines build-up potential. I would tend to agree with my colleagues as far as the CLG uh, and TDR items. I would like to see those changed. I, would say. Um, I think I also agree with Mike as far as the open space upon lane recommendation 14. It is a little too specific. I think we <coughs> tried to emphasize all along this is a town line plan, not specific to certain areas and certain neighborhoods. And I, I think either it should be a recommend an implementation step, implementation step to improve the condition of all town-owned open space or just remove it entirely. So that it doesn't look like anyone is, is getting any sort of favor there. Um, I did have a question as far as the balance of mixed use and I all of a sudden forgot which recommendation that is, but what kind of ratio would you suggest putting in there? If one, would it be just a study as to what works in other towns and what might work in Arlington? Yeah, we heard um, there was a story in uh, town of Bedford that had mixed use. It was commercial and residential. And the commercial use was, <coughs> it was just an ATM. Mm -hmm. And that was sufficient. <laughs> so we want to make sure it's a significant um, commercial use in the building. What that percentage is, I don't know. but I. The, the sense I get is that it's at least one four. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I would go further to, to say that <coughs> I think when we all generally think about mixed use, we picture retail shops with apartments above or something like that. But we might have buildings where we want um, to allow a really robust non-residential use, but it might not necessarily need to be on the first floor. Like if someone's really interested in doing some type of a shared workspace, that might not be something that would look great in <coughs> a display window, but if it takes up a good amount of the space in the building, I don't think we'd want to discourage that. So the, the real idea is just to make sure that there's a real, um, that it's more than passes the straight face test. We, we really want a robust uh, business use in mixed use buildings. I think that's the point of that, that recommendation. Okay. And then as far as trees, there were some comments that we saw as far as trees on public ways and how those were cut down. Did the committee look into that at all? That as far as how those are cut and then preserved for the next cut? I think people complained that they were just sort of lopped off at a certain height. Correct. Left that way. We didn't really look into We didn't it. pursue that. Um, I can I can find that out for the board. We didn't I didn't put a recommendation in um, on that. So it is something that I think um, we wouldn't be precluded from pursuing based on other recommendations that are in here. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it from my end. <coughs> and you, you had a question. Yeah, where does that, that was good, Carol, this discussion of alternatives, alternative definitions of mixed use, where does that come into it? There is a... Um, is, is it somehow referred to as what mixed use is? Because yeah. There's a good discussion of mixed use on page 29. Yeah. It's funny, we actually had this discussion uh -oh. last year. Oh, last I think year. when we were yeah. talking about mixed use. Yeah, that's right. Oh, here it is. Density and design. Page no. 29. Um, the second column, uh, first column towards the bottom. Yep. Um, 
it says people want to live in Arlington. Residential demand and residential property values held strong during the economic downturn and have increased rapidly since the economy improved. This market pressure threatens to convert the scarce land available for Arlington's limited commercial tax base into more residential development. The traditional form of Arlington's commercial districts is mixed use style buildings that have commercial uses, usually at the street level, and living units on upper floors above. By harnessing the market's drive towards residential uses, policies that promote higher value mixed use redevelopments instead of apartment only or condominium only buildings could reinforce and increase commercial uses <coughs> in and business tax revenue from our business districts. At the same time, policies that promote mixed use could be crafted in a way to produce the smaller residential units desired by young adults and older Arlingtonians who want to stay here after their children have grown. Arlington zoning bylaw states that mixed uses are allowed, however few mixed use buildings have been constructed under the requirements of the current bylaw. Uh, that has to do, in my opinion, with there is not a lot of guidance in the zoning bylaw. And although in one of the zoning descriptions, <coughs> it says that mixed use is encouraged, there's nothing else in the bylaw that encourages it. In fact, it's, it's um, kind of onerous because you, if you want to do mixed use right now, you have to um, provide more on-site parking. You have to consume more of your costly land for parking than you would if you're just doing a uh, single-use building. So that right there, it seems to, you know, we're saying on one hand we're encouraging it, and then on the other hand we have requirements that effectively serve to discourage it. Yeah, this is really important. I mean, we're hearing more about, you know, a live-work units all around the country, and those are kinds of things that it's like a it is a commercial use. So it's a, it's a might be a single small business or person who is running a business and living in the same quarters. Old, very old, old school kind of yeah. concept that's coming back that could help that situation. Mm -hmm. They also call it maker housing. You know, the people that are producing light industry or small craft industry. Mm -hmm. And that could figure into the mixed use formula. But I think you might kind of have it covered when you say commercial uses. Reinforce increased commercial uses along with residential. But I like that, that just seems. Yeah, I think that's better because it just doesn't say retail. Yes. Yeah, it's all yeah it, could, it doesn't have to be retail. No, right, I mean, correct. We, we would yeah. love to have a row of, of worker, you know, of, uh, of uh, work, live work units. Yeah, the mm -hmm. intention is not to limit it to. I think there's some, some discussion of the co-working spaces yeah. and also being part of the use you alluded to that just now. I think that's important to to note as well. Those are great uses that aren't retail uses. Can that some, is, that's we, not necessary to put those or other or other uh, or other combinations of commercial and residential or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that's really potentially pretty interesting. Or other combinations of live, like live, work, and residential and commercial uses. Okay. That kind of captures that a little bit. Okay. I have one other question, but I interrupted you. Go ahead. I was finished. The, the sustainable part. Where is that? I know you were talking about it relative to floodplain. I'm just curious about it. About where in the plan yeah, yeah. you find? You mentioned it in, in this as being emphasized relative to urban SEO. Um, I think it's natural resources and open space. So something about 106. Something about floodplain. Oh, nine. Nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sustainability yeah. action plan. Any concern for public health? Arlington Sustainability yeah. Action Plan. Where's Arlington Sustainability Action Plan in here? I'm just curious. It's on page 106. Thank you to whoever just told me it's on page 106. <laughs> <laughs> At the bottom on the right, I think Bruce found it. 
So are we at Arlington's commitment to sustainability? Good. Okay. Okay. I, I, I got it. Because it, it's good because you say. Uh, It's just examples of a good sustainability policy to range from safe routes to school program walkability to, 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 to yeah. Okay. Because the the for instance the lead stuff, which is one of the measures of sustainability that's prominent, is now adopted, you know, neighborhood lead, neighborhood development, and all they talk about is one of the main things they talk about is mixed use. So it's, it's being fed from the sustainability side. They're now saying, well, yeah, that's right. People are healthier if they're walking to a drugstore that's near them and they can go to a, a business or a so-and-so or a transportation. So anyway, I think that's important that you've uh, highlighted that from that point of view, too. We had a lot of discussions about what sustainability means. A lot of people think it's just environmental, but it's economic, financial as well. So I think what you're talking about, the neighborhood development, neighborhood lead right. um, would be a good example. And that could be something that, again, is considered as part of a zoning change that makes use. Yeah. yeah, and I think you got it. Many folks have emerged some built in natural environments for people that have healthier, more productive lives. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I think under the public facilities, there is also addressed under energy efficiency or some some oh, other area true. under public facilities. I think somewhat addresses the especially the, the lead part of the construction and buildings and things like that. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, if we were trying to take. I know the board was planning department was taking baby steps toward pushing, and it's interesting that. The regulations have kind of caught up and yeah. surpassed. Um, but it's tricky for us because we, we now require checklists. But we know that small developments can, can be very onerous to someone who's putting an addition on their house and, you know, it's, it's, it has to go through some very cumbersome checklist that's really having to do with a larger commercial building. So it's a little tricky. But it's good that the that master plan is encouraging the next step in sustainability practices. I mean, there are some lead um, houses in Arlington. I don't know if we have a list or not. But there are people that have gone through that whole process. And right, it is costly, but long term, it's better for the environment. That's it. Okay. Any other comments, questions? The Mass Plan Advisory Committee uh, could take a vote on what the committee heard for the discussion to make a final set of recommendations based on uh, the comments heard by the Redevelopment Board. And then the Redevelopment Board could consider adopting that whole slate. So uh, if you like, I can um, review for the Master Plan Advisory Committee what those changes are that you've just, we've just discussed. In addition, uh, this would be in addition to the ones. That right. Were, although I, one of them was removed. Yes, that's correct. Um, uh, that was? 14. Um, it's the, uh, the, the pond lane, the reference to pond lane. Okay. So that one, I think, just comes out. And while we're um, with that sheet in hand, the other change was um, to item 11 uh, regarding uh, removal of mature trees on private property. Uh, we would add and discover what other communities have done in this situation. On pages 10 and 94, we would change the reference to broadening uses to protect historic buildings that are slated for demolition to we would re remove multiple units and replace it with alternate uses. On the statistics in the chart on page 17, 
will clarify what Table 2.4 is illustrating because of the inconsistency with the text. On page 18, paragraph 3, uh, we'll double check, but it appears as though um, the word decreased is supposed to be increased. Uh, the uh, income uh, level increased. Page 77, uh, sandwich board signs will be deleted. The reference to sandwich board signs. Page 101, in the second column, we would change that to read and can be allowed only by permit issued by the Conservation Commission. On page 105, we have to correct the references to the DCR study of the um, Mystic River and Alewife Reservation because it's an inconsistency 2003-2009. Uh, we, with regard to certified local government for this is related to Historic Districts Commission and transfer of development rights. We're going to soften those references to um, study those two techniques and whether they're appropriate for Arlington. And recommendation 12. Um, regarding mixed use and the zoning patchwork, we'll um, work into those references a little bit <coughs> about what the issues are and examples of the problem. And, and on page 29, the mixed use section two, <coughs> some of the effective and other combinations of live, work, uh, residential, and commercial uses. <coughs> Uh, I believe those would also, we have to go through the implementation table to make sure these changes carry yes. through right. all over to the implementation as well. zoning review that the consultant prepared. Um, I think it was in, the intention was to include it as an appendix. It's on the website. It's been reviewed. I think we would just add it as appendix J. Are there any references to recommendations in that or just an analysis? It's just an analysis. Okay. There, there are parts of the, the zoning diagnostic that are in the land use section, but I think it's um, it's a good review. It's a good snapshot of our zoning. So. into, these are the maps that are on the website, and these are the maps that would go into the plan. They would be um, 11 by 17 folded for hard, hard copies, but they'll be larger format for on the website. And uh, it includes the Millbrook study area that the board approved in July 2014. And it's referenced in there. That's right. And we removed the <coughs> numbers, the transects, as well. On those yes. Plans. That's yes, right. Great, great maps. Uh, the housing types yeah. map still has the numbers, so I think that was one of the edits. understand and the consultant team understand different areas of town. But we found they weren't um, really embraced. We did not embrace them. <laughs> 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 they weren't very, very useful. 
Which one? The housing type? Um, yeah, the, the number. number. See the number. When you look at yeah, like seven is just this little block right here. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then nine surrounds it. So I think the consultant was trying to break us out into different neighborhoods, but it's right. oh, not quite so how we do it. No, yeah, not quite how we do it. And you said that they're, they coordinate with census tracts? Oh, no. I, oh, I thought you were talking about the census tract yeah. numbers. Those are in some of the maps, too. Yeah, these are kind of there. Yeah. So we're taking those. Oh, you're so taking those, those are also those those are those are parcel land use. That's the one I think we're talking about. Yeah, yeah as well as the housing we're types. Oh, sorry, yeah. I was looking at the parcel. Yeah, no, those are taken out as well. Okay. It, it, it's no. in the parcel. Oh land yeah, yeah. Well. yeah. It out it's parcel yeah. land use and the housing types. Right. Next, the MPAC needs to vote yes. on the on these recommendations. I think that's that that is what I recommend. Okay. okay. We have a motion to accept the um, recommendations. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So now I guess we need yeah. to. Uh, to to take a vote, right? Okay, yes, all right. So um, I move that the Arlington Board, the uh, Redevelopment Board, accept the uh, master plan uh, with the revisions discussed tonight. Um, and as recommended. Do I? No, we don't want to. We're not doing okay. that. Now. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I guess that's, that's so the, as recommended by the. As as recommended. Accept, accepting? Adopt. Adopt. Okay, so let me rephrase. I move that the Arlington Redevelopment Board adopt the master plan with the revisions discussed tonight as recommended by the Master Planning Advisory Committee. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 100%. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank very you much. Yeah, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All your hard work. Advisory committee, you are amazing. Wow, thank, thank, thank you. Incredible. You're amazing too. <laughs> you need to so know you. We also need to thank uh, Joe Carl or Sally Quinn Seaburn who contributed a lot, and also to um, Christine Spinsky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's right. All, all of you. We volunteered a lot of her time as well, and of course the staff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Really appreciate everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. some of these steps. So the committee just um, considered different ways. Would And, and at this point, uh, it seems like a resolution might be 
the appropriate uh, approach to take. And uh, we have a very nicely worded uh, draft resolution. Thank you, Joe. Um, because, um, and for that reason, we um, have a warrant, a draft warrant in front of you. Does anyone need a copy of this? Can I, put it I have it. Okay. okay. Um, uh, it basically says to see if the town will accept, receive, resolve, or uh, accept, receive, or resolve to endorse the master plan or take any action related thereto. You, this, this is, is very wide ranging. I think the idea is we, we don't want to convey this notion to town meeting members that they're being asked to adopt the plan. The plan is adopted, uh, but we are asking them to embrace it. Embrace the, the, the master plan is like a formal agenda, and we're asking them to um, be prepared to engage in that agenda. So, Resolve to endorse, if we just limited, to, limited it to it, resolve to endorse, we could use the resolution language as the vote, as the language of the vote. I think that that would be, allow for some question and answer from town meeting members, but wouldn't necessarily imply that this is a debate that could go on for days or for hours. And I believe that the town moderator would see it the same way. Uh, accepting the report, receiving the report is, um, if you had either of those in the warrant article, my understanding is that any of this would um, allow room for discussion. If you were only asking town meeting to receive the report. You wouldn't even need a warrant article and there'd be no right. discussion mm -hmm. possible. But I think the committee the committee discussed it and we went all over the, the committee went all over the place and, and staff actually um, discussed it a lot as well. I think we want to give town meeting a little more than just here's the report. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's a little more respectful. So that's and this warrant article language gives you a lot of choice. You may, you may not want it to be as broad as this is. So with that said, I, I, I think the board should discuss it, and I think that the committee, you didn't really, I don't remember if the committee saw a, warrant, a draft warrant article at your last meeting even. So it's, um, this is the first time I think the committee's seeing a draft warrant article, although we discussed it. Yeah. I'm going to just point out, I, I had several conversations with John Leone <clears throat> about how best to do this and um, and his participation in it. And he reminded me that as a warrant article, someone can mo motion to amend this. Yeah. So we need to keep that in mind. And a couple other things. Well, they, but they have to keep it in scope. All right. So that is that is the one thing they, they do have to keep it in scope, um, and from my experience, receiving a report simply is done under our, uh, Article Three. Yeah, start there at the, the very beginning. Yeah. Right, it's Article Three. So I don't think we need a warrant article necessarily to receive a report. Um, although I'm not sure whether discussion is allowed on that. So it's not. So then the question is is if we ask them to receive a report as part of a warrant article, then we can have that discussion. I discussed this um, at length with town council today. I mean, the receipt, yeah, there's no discussion. Acceptance under there, Article there, Three, you mean? Yeah, yeah. There, there could be. Um, I'm sorry. I, you, so you said acceptance. I, he, his understanding is that under with acceptance there could be, but acceptance. I, I think with acceptance, you're not really describing exactly what, what's being put before the, um, the meeting, and, and I think that you have a lot more latitude 
through a resolution to really describe uh -huh. what the process is, and this is not the end of the story. This is really the beginning of the story. Um, so, I mean, I personally would advise that you go, after yeah, thinking about it a lot, and also going back and forth quite a bit, that 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 you consider. Um, well, I, I think tonight all you have to do is to vote to request that this be placed on the warrant. Right. Uh, with this language, but then that you consider a crafted uh, resolution that will, you know, allow the, the proper, you know, debate and and questioning of the plan, but also describe exactly what this means, that th this is going to be a continued Iterative, process going yeah. forward, and the town meeting will be consulted, and other boards and commissions will be consulted. And there, I counted it up, there are 85 recommendations in the master plan, so I think it just has to be made, you know, very clear that by accepting the, any resolution that comes out in a recommended vote, you're not necessarily accepting all, everything that's in there. You know, it all has to come back. It all has to come back. It all has to come back. From so an I, I would, standpoint. I would recommend going the warrant article resolution route. And if you do choose to do that, um, you know, I'd be prepared to ask my board to also hear if there is precedent mm -hmm. for that for, for multiple boards to uh, hear these and, and um, to hopefully come to, to a, um, an agreement on recommended um, a recommended vote to put before a town meeting. Obviously that's up to, to them with their discretion. Okay. Please. Yeah. Uh, so, so is the recommendation just to have, or is the recommendation, is the thought just to have it be uh, simply to see if the town will resolve to endorse versus to see if the town will accept, receive, or resolve to endorse the master plan or take. I mean, eventually we have to come up with a vote. Mm -hmm. So I think it's probably okay to keep everything uh, in there because it's ultimately what the vote is. Although yeah. someone could, I guess, put in a substitute that says we're just going to we're just going to receive it or something. Okay, fine. You know, if someone wants to put in a substitute like that. Um, I, I will say the one thing I guess I would I would definitely uh, put in here is to see if the town will, whatever we decide there, to endorse a master plan um, adopted by the Arlington Redevelopment uh, Board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah we, we don't want to discuss any <laughs> other master plan. <laughs> Why do you have to say receive? We're asking them to receive. No, no, no. <laughs> Ultimately, this keeps it in our purview when we ultimately take our, when we actually have the public hearing for what it is we yeah. do with the warrant article, it'll give us the latitude if we decide, you know what, we don't want to go the resolution oh, route, we just want to ask them to receive it. And frankly, we could go no action in here and, and move that to just an Article 3. If that's what we wanted to do, it's well. Article three is, just is, is when you know when so everyone gets up and says receive, receive our report. Part of the yeah. report of the Could, ARB in a town meeting, and the report would consist of the master plan as adopted by the board. But you have to have a warrant article to receive a report. No, to have a discussion around the receipt of the report. Okay. So that the so that's why I'm wondering why receive has to be because because by doing that, if we decide to do the receipt of the report under the warrant article versus under Article 3, everyone can actually discuss it. I see. see, if we if we only do it under Article 3, there can't be discussion. It's either a yay or nay. We either receive the master plan, which isn't really a report anyway. But anyway, um, so I think it does make sense. The one that doesn't make as much sense to me is accept. I don't really know what accept means. Right. Um, I know what receive means. Yeah. Um, but Agreed. so um, that's I also think yeah, it endorse. Um, it's going to strike some people as um, approving of it in its entirety, and there are people who don't feel that way. Yeah. So I think that might create some friction. The, the, endo the, the endorse mm -hmm. verb. Well, I'm not sure what the resolution would be other than an endorsement, though. What else would a resolution be in that case? Uh, you, you know, it would be uh, two two things come to mind with respect to that. Number one is is I believe we've always said that we're going to bring it to town meeting to, for its endorsement. So well, I that think was, it's, that's, you just reminded me of my I, other I, question. I think it's hard. So I think it's it might be a difficult thing not to bring it for that endorsement. Okay, because wait, wait a second, you thought you were you had always said that you were going to come to town meeting for its endorsement. Um, and and I think it's 
important to do the res resolve to endorse because it should be through a resolution and not through any other mechanism, I guess. My question is, when the Warren article passed for us to, to initiate this, what was the, wor the wording that we would do to bring it to, th what, what, was, what was the language? That we would do the, the initiate the plan and then what? That's a, that's a smart question. Um, my recollection is, though, that it was um, the master plan was not initiated by a warrant article. It was by um, the redevelopment board. It, I don't think it went to town meeting except through the budget process. Through the budget, I yeah. think that was it. Yeah, it was just to, to put out the budget for the. And then what did so what what did we tell people at the meetings? Somebody must have asked that question along the, the line, or we must have. The word endorse was used a lot. It was okay. Yeah. I mean, for better or worse, we, we should bring it to the town meeting as we had promised to bring it in that form. Yeah. Go ahead, Joe. I I would really strongly recommend that you um, maintain the language with with the addition of yeah. you know by the redevelopment board. As I think this was recommended by council to give mm -hmm. you yep. that maximum latitude. Because you may find that in the course of discussion that, that it makes more sense to ask town meeting for endorsement of the redevelopment board's action and of the ongoing process, and you may find that town meeting is, is very comfortable with that, whereas if you're asking them to endorse, you know, I, I think you're giving yourself the maximum latitude by keeping all of these, all three of these verbs in here. Yeah. You're comfortable with the wording with the addition of the um, yeah. adopt by the knowledge. Yeah. That's just my two cents. No, that's just, go ahead. I, I just wanted to um, mention that some, somewhere, not not in the warrant, but I think it should be explained to town meeting that I think it's state law or whatever it is that governs that is the planning board that's, that mm -hmm. is um, yeah. authorized to adopt mm -hmm. the plan. It's not town meeting that's authorized. They need to understand that mm -hmm. it's not their job to adopt the plan, that it's your well, job. And somehow that just needs to be clear so yeah. that people there, because somehow endorse makes it sound like yeah, it's pretty active. the ones that are. It's pretty active. Put that into, yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. it's not an into active. The, the, the warrant article, something to the effect of, to, um, to see if the town will accept, receive, or resolve to endorse the master plan adopted by the Arlington Redevelopment Board um, as, as, as authorized by pursuant, pursuant, pursuant to general law. Pursuant to whatever. General. General. No, because that makes the endorsement sound like it's required. Uh, oh, yeah. So right. I would not do that. I, I think it's more of an explanatory. Is there explanatory. a way I think, yes. to cite the um, statute without? It, um, or can't you say that, that the master plan, which is prepared for to Yeah, you're right. I mean, that's sort of a, yeah. a wordsmithing on the, the yeah. resolution. I think I so. I think the resolution the needs to be pretty uh, clear on that. Clear yes. yeah. on yeah. the on the whole thing, mm -hmm. and that it, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. At the risk of diving into really funky semantics, perhaps the way to to um, address that concern would just be to say to endorse. The adoption of the master plan by the Arlington Redevelopment Board, but it's already done. I know. Yeah, but it's already done. Right. I mean, um, if you said the adoption of it, sounds like it's to be done. Yeah. It could be interpreted as to be yeah. done. I, that's why I wanted to say adopted by because it's done. And yeah. you know, the thing that we're going to have to um, explain is that endorsement, no endorsement. The master plan is done. Um, so, so what are we asking them to do? We are asking them to endorse it. We so want we're them asking them to say they agree with it. Mm -hmm. that, that's support that's it. Support it. Support it. And I think it's support kind of, it is, it's a little, here. there is a distinction because I think that, and maybe this also needs to get woven into the final version of the resolution, but, you know, I, I think you have to come back to the idea that this is a living document. Right. And that from that document, there are specific recommendations that will come before future town meetings, future changes or warrant articles for changes to the bylaw. Um, but, you're, but it's important to understand that town meeting in 2015 is not voting tonight on those <coughs> types of zoning bylaw changes. Right. right. So I think it's very important, excuse me, to 
make that very yeah. clear at the outset. Right. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. And yeah. One of the things that, that we made clear is that the master plan itself is not a binding document. Nothing in here after our endorsement tonight is guaranteed to happen. It's all to be brought before town meeting, to be studied, right. Right. to be yeah. implemented. It, and in that's effect, it's like... But it exists. And, but it, every, and, it will and every exist. one of the 84 recommendations, <laughs> implementations, <laughs> and or anything that costs money will come. We have to... But a lot of people do not know that. They'll walk into the... Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. And they won't know that. So there are a few facts, very simple facts, that need to be explained. Right. Um, in effect, it's like an agenda. Well, yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. That's a it is a it is a well, well thought out agenda for the yeah. it is. Or it's a plan for the future. The that they will have a chance to vote right. on anything that that requires bylaw change, uh, uh, anything that has a cost attached to it. Um, yeah, that we do not. I've heard the phrase carte blanche. People yeah. think that we will have carte blanche, we, you, uh, whoever, to go ahead and implement this plan. I, I think that in my own view is, is is when we got into the first part of the hearing that um, uh, we've all been working on it for so long that we knew that this was the case. And, you know, we kind of took it for granted and didn't lay out that introductory um, statement that's very important for everyone to understand, uh, including at the hearing. And I think, to some extent, I think that's what you saw with comments and everything else. And I think it is very important that we get it right uh, as we approach town meeting. I'll also say that just given how we have approached it to date, I, I find it difficult to get away from the notion of a resolution for endorsement. So mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we can avoid that. So. On, on Nor Mike's do we want point. to. Um, I found this language from the Webster Master Plan page that the Master Plan Advisory Committee, some of the uh, members thought we should use in some of our collateral brochures and stuff. The Master Plan is not a zoning bylaw, a subdivision regulation, a budget, capital improvement program, or other regulatory document. It is meant to provide the framework for the development of these plan implementation tools. Perfect. Yeah. So that, I, um, I'll have to... Thank Webster, <laughs> Thank Webster, but I think it, that's what you're getting at. I'm Absolutely. Sure. Mm -hmm. I, I had here in my notes that we want them to engage in the process, and it seems like that's mm. what. That's interesting. I don't know if you said it. Mm -hmm. but it's in the resolution. Yeah, that it's a process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, Good. The, also, this this Commonwealth of Massachusetts um, guideline, not guideline, but description of what a master plan is, is it is also stating that. Um, goals and policy statement, blah, 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 it goes down what you've done, exactly what you've done. So is this something you want to include? Maybe that's too much. I like the Webster one because it tells what it's not. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And it's going to quell a lot of, of so fear, fear questioning, um, put having people on the, the, in, on the defense immediately. Once you, once you give them all the information, it sort of takes some of the fire out. Yeah. If there, if there are little fires yeah. that will mm -hmm. rear their little heads. Yep. Yeah. It is designed to provide a basis for decision making. Such a plan may be added or changed from time to time. I mean, this this is exactly what you implemented. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, that's not a surprise. A living a living document. Right. Right. Consultants have had a number of master plans and that have right. gone to the state. So, do we, does anyone have any other comments to the wording, or? I think I'm fine with just the insertion that you made, and uh, I would like to keep it broad mm -hmm. to say accept, yeah. receive, or endorse. Uh, or, so resolve to endorse. endorse. or resolve to endorse. <laughs> I'll make a motion um, yeah. that uh, the redevelopment board requests the insertion of uh, the following uh, warrant article uh, uh, titled Master Plan uh, into the warrant uh, to see if the town will accept, receive, or resolve to endorse the master plan adopted by the Arlington Redevelopment Board or take any action related thereto. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 You were asking the conjunctive. Or. Yeah, or is important um, because we're going to ask them to do one of those things. We're not going to ask them to do all three. No, the second or is we going to or take any other action? No, no the first or. No, the first or. Yeah, it shouldn't be conjunctive. We're not going to be asking them to do all three. Yeah. That's, that's what There'll be a resolution. That's what Okay. Yeah, but it also or we'll just ask them, if we don't want to go the resolution route, we could just ask them to receive no, and then we'll have discussion. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, we'll be writing a long, we write a, uh, we'll write a long resolution that will then yes. be voted so this gives you the ultimate flexibility. I had to say this is just a Warren article. Yeah. Story, yeah. Because yeah. we really do want them to do all three. Yeah, right. Except receive, accept, and endorse. Yeah, I think I think receive is just like a, what what the Uncle Sam committee does. Mm -hmm. They give the report. That's mm -hmm. a little different than this. Mm -hmm. Or what the Human Rights Commission does, right? Right, but we can do that at any point in time. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Back to the minutes from January 5th. Uh, I would ask if I can just take that turn because I still well, have to I gotta, speed read these guys. I'll tell you, I, I did read them, and let me tell you, they were great. The only, the only, thing, the only thing that wasn't right in two places was Mr. Kowalski. Still more to do. That's what I had. Um, really, that's that's what I had. I thought they were great. I'm fine. I guess I'm fine too. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Thank you. But I'll uh, rely on my good friend. Yeah, I, I think I think I did. These are the rare ones and everything else. Yeah. So just fix the Mr. Kowalski reference. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Andy's trying to get out of the fact that he was uh, voted in as vice chair. I think. <laughs> in those minutes, so sure that, 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 was, that is correct. That is correct. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, motion to accept the minutes as amended of uh, January fifth. Accepted. All in favor. Aye. Aye. While you're still in session, yes. Uh, I want to just right. note for the record that um, Andy West uh, reviewed the uh, transcript of comments of the public hearing and also listened to an audio recording of the public hearing on the master plan. Uh, and I certified that he's on my Get those things. That's not required, but it's something that Andy did do so that he would be able to vote. With as much thank you. Benefit. Thank you. Yeah. Thank so, you. Sorry. That's great. No, thank you. I wanted that to be on the record. Thank you very much for doing that. Thank you. Um, meetings? What's the Okay. The next meeting on the draft schedule is February 23rd. There's a holiday. Yeah, the 16th. February 16th. Yeah. Um, and isn't that, um, a hearing schedule for the 23rd, right? The, um, to whatever, Mass Ave. Isn't that, is that on the 23rd? I think it's on the 23rd. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. Um, yeah, it's the 23rd. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 We have, we do have an interesting EDR coming up. Um, 28 Mass Ave. Um, I just put the legal ad in, but I can't remember. Um, we said it was March 2nd or, uh, no, I think it is February 23rd. So uh, then you would have the hearing on, there's one warrant article, there's one zoning amendment warrant article um, regarding notices um, for non-commercial things that the public wants to do. 
it's um, not a big deal, in my view, um, as far as the, the, the zoning part is concerned. But you still, by law, have to hold a hearing. That would be March 2nd. Uh, and the sponsor is available uh, for March 2nd. So it appears that you have February 23rd and then March 2nd. And then I think you're going to want to just decide among yourselves if your uh, second March meeting would be the 16th or the 23rd. I think you'll just decide that based on how, the, how those, both, those two hearings go if they need to be continued. I'm just trying to remember your email earlier today, uh, your um, correspondence with the, the proponent of the Warren article. Did he say that he was not available on the 2nd and could be on the 16th? He initially, until today, his, he had a professional <coughs> obligation yeah. on, the, on the March 2nd, and he was asking if the board could hear him on the 16th. Right. But then his client canceled. And oh, so he's back to the so second. Now. He's back okay, to I got second. it. Yeah, I apologize for the confusion. Well, the other one that we're going to go through is this one. Is yes, right. is that one on the second as well, right? So yes, that isn't a zoning bylaw, so you don't have to have a formal public hearing on oh. on that. Interesting. Yeah, it's. Um, yeah, I think your work is done on your master plan warrant article, except for the language of the vote. Right, the actual yeah. resolution. Interesting. When would that have to be? Well, we'd have to get a, a print. Yeah, so. Yes, um, the... When would you review that? Selectman's office. I'll email you the date by which they need to have the report of the redevelopment board on the zoning bylaw and the warrant article. I believe it's the first week of April. I'll email that to you. And the language for the vote, I'd like you to get that into shape on the same schedule so that that can go, uh, of course it has to go into the mailing to town meeting members. By when? I, I'm pretty sure it has to be by the first week of April. Oh, I would just do it by the second anyway. I sure. think it's a good idea. The sooner, it just gets so busy. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have the... Fresh in our minds right now. Mm -hmm. And if people are here and they want to hear it, then yeah, so be it. Right. So March 2nd, um, I don't have any other business on your docket on March 2nd, so... A little concerned about February 23rd, frankly, and you need all four of us if there's a hearing. Right? Um, mm -hmm. I, I think I'll be okay. Okay. Um, is, speaking of which... They... Um, candidate was asked to resubmit everything. Um, okay. There wasn't a problem, it's just that the administration changed. <laughs> uh, She'd already passed the background check. Okay. So she's preparing another set of materials. Um, okay. I don't have any more. No, they're yet. just more curious. Yeah. Thank you. So I think that's all the news. Okay. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great.